Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we are going to be playing some more Timeless. Going to give it another shot. I've been kind of down with the show and tell meta. It's not been the most fun for me. Uh, and I'm kind of seeing some echoed comments in uh, the metagame video that I put out earlier this week. Regarding the metagame videos for Historic, Explore, and Timeless Best of Three, the data is slow to come in. Honestly, this new set, I don't know if it's just like super unpopular that people aren't trying out new things and it's all old decks, or it's just that like the volumes aren't there. But anytime I look at those other formats, it's all old cards. It's like no new decks, no new ideas are being tried out. Um, so from a content perspective, it's really frustrating as well as just getting out information. So I don't want to just be like putting out videos of, hey, this deck, this blue white control deck from six months ago is still the, the best deck. It, even though it might be but um so this deck here actually did come from untapped it's currently got a 73 percent win rate um as you can see here 37 games so not a huge sample size but i wanted to try out something see if we can build and play against show and tell so it's a teamer kind of mid-range shell a lot of powerful cards here jarsil okos minsk lelia so it's got like elements of the jund mid-range deck uh, you got Goyfs in here, you got the, the DRC, Ragavan, Unholy Heat package, but blue cards get you access to Spell Pierce, Expressive Iteration, and Oko in the main. Um, the sideboards were kind of the tech is and what kind of drew me to this deck. And four of Agent of Treachery. So opponents show and tells they put in Omniscience or an Atraxa into play. Well, you just steal their best card. And then you are the show and tell gamer. So kind of cool tech that's being played there. You got more spell pierces, you got cages, you got uh, gusts, and you got Veil of Summers as well. Um, the deck can't really support Blood Moon because of how the mana base is constructed. The one thing that I may want to consider, I think between spell pierce and aether gust, we'll see how the Titan matchup is. I'm a little concerned there. I may want to put in some Ferocidons. Um, but it's kind of like, okay, do we want to beat show and tell? Do we want to beat field? And kind of go from there. The only other consideration I was going to have was Ragavan's kind of bad in the format right now between Bowmasters, everything like that. I was strongly considering just going up to Spell Pierce in the main to help with uh, game one against show and tell. I think game two and three we were pretty good, but game one's a little rough um, potentially. So we'll see how the games go first, and then we'll always circle back as needed. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of, I don't want to say tilted off Timeless, but just with show and tell, it's really pushed. The format was already like doing busted things, but there was still somewhat fair decks that could be played. Um, your Jun midrange, like it's the Sultai decks, like even Titan to some extent is a quote unquote fair deck. While all the decks could kind of do inherently powerful things, show and tell like as early as turn two, just winning the game feels really annoying um and the, the elements of counterplay like you can't just like stick a cage or like various things it's a lot tougher of kind of a situation to handle but we're gonna give this a shot see how it plays plays first Luris. so no show and tell um i think we'll keep this uh i do want to fetch probably steam vents with this one so we lead on drc they're not on Blood Moon, so we're going to keep this hand. It's just a matter of how we want to lead off. This puts into play um, a land, and then we have Unholy Heat as well as our first removal spell. We're not guaranteed to be able to uh, get Delirium right away. So Steam Vents here, Shock In, Dragon Rage, because I, I want to get it out of Bowmaster range. Okay, so this is burn. So they could have lightning helix. We do also have Oko here. I think here we're just going to go and get the Ketria Triome. Fortunately, this not being Bolt hurts here. 
So kind of a cool line here. I could Boseju the Eidolon and then um, hit that. So I think we're going to do that line. So let them potentially play a spell here. That's fine. So Beseju here. They do get a land out of this. I'm going to take the two damage here. Because if they want to play a follow-up spell, I want them to take damage from their Eidolon. Okay, so there we basically just get two points of damage. I'm going to get double Surveil off here. Bobble could go away. Okay, so we have Goyf as a 6-7, or I have Oko. I think this turn I'm going to play out Oko. They have Mana Tithe? Okay. That way next turn I can play Goyf and gain 3 life. This is also a distraction that will take some spells. Okay, so they're just going to go face. So it could be that they just have Double Bolt. Or Triple Bolt. Miss. Okay. Miss. One short. Okay, so that does get me to four life here. I mean, they churned quite a bit. Sick. Goifinoko too much. Um, so this matchup, I just want the Aether Gus, I think. And... Spell Pierce is kind of reasonable, I think. Probably trim on Expressive. I'm going to trim on the Ragavans. They have so many ways to interact with Ragavan. Whereas like Spell Pierce can be timely in terms of hitting things. I want all my removal spells in this matchup. The Gust can also just be used as tempo plays. We also know what we're against now, so we just want to be cautious. What we're going to keep an eye out for is whether or not they remove Luris. That, okay, so they have Blood Moon now. So we want to fetch around. So that's always kind of the tell. They took out their Luris, which means they brought in Blood Moon. This hand looks okay. Um, we'll keep the, the kill everything approach here. So here I'm going to fetch a forest. So it's actually a bit tricky because I need to fetch the forest. Oh, okay, so we just naturally drew the forest. So in that case, go Eidolon here, or Dragon Rage. We have two burn spells available. So Spear. Just 
just killing here. Take the damage. I know it turns on spectacle, but having that alive has more utility. They missed a line drop. Could play this. We already have the land in the yard, so it doesn't do too much. I do think I want to kill that. We'll just pass the turn here. That's fine. Let them take their damage here. We will bolt here, hopefully get... Okay, so Oko's great. You want the Molten Collapse, I think. Probably should have held it up to make it seem like we had action there. Um, I do think I want Oko potentially alive, so we'll see. Because they're going to have the Swiss Spears. They're kind of incentivized to burn through a bunch of resources here. Okay, so the, the Helix here for two points. Okay, they just concede. That's cool. We'll take that. Very impatient burn player. On the board. Been a little awkward with just our flips. We've been hitting the lions needed, but we haven't been hitting um, like full delirium that easy. We haven't had the nice uh, early turn of like flipping your DRC bobble, like fetch DRC bobble kind of draws. So as we wait for our next opponent, you'll see in the top right hand corner, we're one sub from 11700, but we are trying to get to 15,000 subs on the channel, free to sub to, to YouTube, helps support your sub, greatly appreciated, but also likes and comments go a long way to helping. Like first. All right, so how's, how's this look? I mean, we'll probably find another land. I want to see what we're playing against. Probably Zoo. Zoo. Um, I mean, Goyf's pretty big right now already. Three, four. We'll just do the draw on their turn now. So we got bolt, so I can Regavan and bolt. I'm waiting to see what they get. So we, we know they have Nashiba Brawler. Stubborn Denial. Ooh, another Bolt's nice. We're gonna play this out. I can go Goyf here. I can do this plus. 
I think I like that line. Because this will also turn on Delirium. Sure, I will keep all the bolts. Here's my monkey. We're the real zoo. Them doing that there is fine. Um, guess the question. Fetch breeding pool, or I can fetch steam vents. My deck's mostly red, so we're probably fine there. I may even just want to go face here. Cool. Um, in this matchup, Aether Gust over the Spell Pierce, I think. Other than that, I think Ragavan comes out, especially on the play. I guess maybe one Spell Pierce isn't too bad. They'll have Ley Lines. They'll have at least 12 pieces of interaction. Kind of play it like that. If they bring in Okos, it's fine. If they bring in like any of those other uh, creatures, it seems fine. A triple bobble. Fuel your graveyard, get a bunch of info. I largely think this domain deck's bit fallen behind. It's more fair than some of the other decks. You're hit harder by Blood Moon and just in these creature aggro mirrors, you can see like just getting hit, like your mana does so much damage to you because you're playing such density of shock lines. The ley line doesn't work like it does in modern because you don't have Kabu, which then gives all your things like lifelink and all those extra abilities. We'll probably bring in the Regavan again on the play, but on the draw, I don't want to play from behind. All right, this sounds good. I cast once upon a time. I'll probably fetch for uh, steam vents here. Or stomping ground, maybe. We'll see. Um, start a bobble. Probably is their next play. I mean, they could counter it. Yeah, kill this now. Because they have the force spike, I don't necessarily want to do that. Because I can get this to four, and then Molten Impact cleanly answers it. Um, don't particularly want to shock in just yet. I already have that, so let's just get the green here. Get some information. There are the planes on top. We'll draw a card. Again, you want to do this now before they fetch blue. We do have Oko, I do have Jarsal that can also flash back the Bolt, which is probably going to be the line we go with. I 
guess they could have Bolt here, which makes it worse. They could also have Ley Line, so let's try to bait out. Yeah, they have a pause. I want to just get out whatever removal they have here. I get to put a point of damage on it. Honestly, second jar still is pretty sick. Because I can get back the first one. Got out the bolt there. Okay, so that's actually pretty sick, because now... I think we just start doing this. Sick. So we could have gone Lelia. We had a whole bunch of different options to start pushing through a bunch of damage. 2 0. What did we get? Brown Spider. I got a bunch of those. My gold and gem reserve is so low, I've been hunting for uh, wild cards. I do, I was getting to the point where I'm like, maybe I just craft show and tell to play show and tell to combat show and tell in the most show and tell metagame. It's the same where uh, Geist was picking up popularity and best of one and I hate the deck, but also it was the same version as a historic. So I had to play the deck to understand the deck to talk about how it plays into the timeless meta and I just felt so dirty. Like in this deck, got a good mix of proactive elements. Oko is Broko. Funny that like Uro is not strong enough for this format in the end. Maybe even opponent goes first. No companion. I think I keep this. Okay, so show and tell. So we will get to try out our tech, see if it works. I guess the question here, do I go steam vents? Probably. make it seem like we potentially have spell pierce up also helps us dig if we do hit spell pierce we definitely don't want molten impact Atwara. Oh, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. So I actually don't think we, uh, because with Leyline they could combo at instant speed. Hopefully we draw an untapped line, that would be the best. Bring it in. Is Ketria's killing me here? I actually don't think we want Ketri on this deck. We're so low curve, like this tap line may... Because like if we got out another threat here, it would have been really useful. And the thing is, if I tap out this turn, they just go for the combo. Okay, 
Get pierced. Like, you have Ley Line. Goyce a 5 6. So, I think we just go Goyf here, hold up the fetch. Eight. I'm just making it seem like we have something. Because they have Ley Line, they could combo at instant speed. So they show and tell here, even though we have the treasure up. Get a tracks, uh Got a couple spell pierces in there. So here, we can actually kill Atraxa next turn, leveraging Unholy Heat with Char Soul Flashback Unholy Heat. So they're going to get to 10. So they did have the double show and tell draw, which is pretty solid for them. This line here, they're going to gamble for show and tell. They discard omniscience, which is pretty nice. So even though they got show and tell, falls behind. So they could gamble again. We know they have at least one spell pierce. They didn't have spell pierce, we'd be okay. Jeez, they got another one. Niv Mizzet. And yeah, they're tapped out here. So I think what we do. We block. We do this, and then Jar Soul can hit the Niv Mizzet here. Um, I think I just want Burn as much as possible. They can ping a damage. They can kill my Ragavan. But they're dead anyways. Get rid of the 
land. Got him. All right, super sweet tech time. So, Spell Pierce is in. I don't think we want Veil of Summer. We do want the Agent of Treacheries. Minsk is kind of slow. Probably trim on the iterations. Trim completely on Molten Impact. It just really doesn't do much in this matchup. I still think Unholy Heat's fine at the very, like, they showed Niv. It could stack with Atraxa at instant speed. Go, go, Agent of Treachery. So do we just like aggressively mulligan to the Agent draws? That could be it. One in our opener. I think we mulligan. Sick. Sick hand, keep. They might be on Blood Moon. So I probably fetch Forest afterwards. Oh my god. I manually tap my Steam Vents to cast my blue spell. You have one land, you have one card that's blue. I gamble. Play this out, see what we steal with the monkey. Okay, we got steam vents. I have a choice here. I can questing druid here just as another creature. I think we just pass. Because I might also be able to hit spell pierce. Seeing the surveil lines. Niv in the yard. They're not suggesting to me Blood Moon yet, but we'll also take a look. Sure. What do we hit? What do we hit? What do we hit? Ley line. Ley line ain't that great. So they're digging. Kept it on top. Day of wishes. Hmm. 
We've got steam vents here. Do you have to cast Oko this turn? This Fae buys them a turn. I'll just bolt here. They have another spell pierce. Figure if they did, probably use it there. Play our tap land. I have active Oko. I have this that can get back bolt or Ragavan here. I can go questing druid into this, have it up. Alright, here it comes. Can I have that? I'm gonna borrow that, okay? Draw another opus. I mean, multiple opuses is kind of annoying. They just pull it all off. It might be right next game just to play Questing Druid if they find their way out of this. I mean, even at this point, they're gonna churn through so much of their deck. Come on. Okay, so start with expressive. We definitely want spell pierce to hand. Land away, play goif. And then no, I clicked the wrong one. That's not what I meant to do. I meant to animate it. Um, so we have two creatures in the yard. There's one instant. They have multiple instances, so we're okay. I think we're holding the land here because it's not really going to do anything. Um, probably just going to get Ragavan. Guess I can go Bolt Face. Makes them a little bit bigger. We have Spell Pierce available. Next turn, I'll cast Expressive again. Get wrecked! Get wrecked! Ah! Uh, give me that. No, I keep freaking hitting the wrong one. And 
find a way. Got him. Despite my inability to like properly assess Oko. All right, that was sweet. That was sweet. We did the thing. In any case, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you have a great one, and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks.